Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Hi, Ashley. Hey, hey, girl. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Coming off of some really good eating. So (laughs) I've been in good spirits. How about you? Wonderful. I'm doing all right. You know, I've been dealing with this cough that I got from my daughter, courtesy of pre-K. And um, she's fine. And I am not. So (laughs) I, I can't wait till the situation is done, if you know what I mean. So let's go ahead and talk about our Thanksgiving. We really had a wonderful conversation. You all need to check it out. It's on our From Scratch recap. The first like 15 minutes we're talking about our Thanksgiving (laughs) must-haves. So, and then can we also give a shout out to the one and only Timby Locke, who reposted our recent Instagram reel on her stories. Amazing. Like, O-M-F-ing-G. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. It just made me so happy and so unexpected. And she didn't have to do that. So again, I said this in my message and I'm sure she didn't see it, but I thanked her for telling her story, sharing it with the world because it was absolutely important and needed. So Mm -hmm. if you guys have not checked out that recap, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Go back and check it out. Even if you didn't finish it, just listen to a recap so you don't have to do it by yourself. (laughs) So we can be with you through this journey. We're your favorite pop culture girlfriends. Mm -hmm. We're sitting on the couch right with you. So Ashley, what did you have for Thanksgiving? All the things, man. All the things things you wanted that I wanted. We had a turkey, ham. I got my chitlins. Lord, give me strength. (laughs) Greens, macaroni and cheese, mashed potatoes, carrot cake. Mashed potatoes. Yes, ma'am. I didn't know black people did mashed potatoes for things. We do. We do. Mashed potatoes and gravy, stuffing. All the things, Delora, all the must-haves. The only thing that I did not get this year was cranberries and I'm cranberry sauce. And I'm I'm okay. I wanted the, it, the but canned, I'm okay. Right? Yes, yes, yes. But I'm the only one who eats it. So this mm. year it was just kind of like accidentally left off the list. And I'm okay. Carrot cake was phenomenal. I did not gorge myself on dessert this year, guys, because I, I made that mistake last year <laughs> and had a stomach ache eating four pieces of cake. <laughs> Wow. right after dinner so we did well this year but yeah we definitely i ate two three plates it was everything how was yours what'd you have well we traveled to michigan we got a chance to spend time with my family and my husband's family and it was wonderful we got a chance to meet uh the twins uh, the new addition to our family Um, Amara loves her family, which I love so much. So seeing her cousins was a blast. And of course her grandparents, but in terms of food, we, my mom did a fantastic job. Thank you so much, Markel. (laughs) Um, you know, she makes her turkey and the, the turkey meat falls off the bone. Mm. Like, and I'm sorry. Thank you to my mom because she made everything. So appreciate you too, mom. <laughs> so sorry. Did not mean to make it seem like this food just mysteriously showed up. My mother did everything. Love you. Anyway, go ahead, Laura. Sweet potatoes, mac and cheese. We did not do greens this year, but my I I'm, I adore collard greens. But I also really love green beans with the with the potatoes in it. My mom did that and. She doesn't eat meat, but she does it in a way that's still very much delicious. 
you know, without the ham hock or even the turkey neck or what have you. What else? I didn't eat ham this year, but it was a good time. It was wonderful. I made the pies. I made my sweet potato pie as well as my pecan pie, which apparently is legend. So I'm very proud of that. And, and I go. would say I would bake you a pie, but you don't eat pies. So that's a whole nother thing. But there's so many other desserts options, Laura. I love key lime you know, pie. You haven't had my cake, cookies, have you? Have there we a, go. Cookies. You I'm haven't had my else. world famous chocolate chip cookies. I'm going to have to make you some chocolate, um, chocolate cake. I'm, you know, I'm open. <laughs> shout out to Tony. I got a chance to see her in her new house. And hi, Mama Jones. I love y'all so much. Their family and Janan. What's what it do? Um, so it was wonderful. We got a chance to see family and friends. So That's I just awesome. wanted to give our audience an update since we were so excited. You know, it's like a <laughs> vacation. You're more excited leading up to it than once you're actually there, you know? I get you. But this year it was especially nice because I actually had some time off and I have not had much time off in the last like six months. So that was another thing that made it nice was actual time off. So I'm very thankful. For we that. are prioritizing this. Okay, mm-hmm. Ashley. Mm-hmm. Very, very nice. So We're very happy to be back on the pod as well. So let's get into these quick headlines. All right. During this long weekend, one famous housewife got married. I'm talking about the one, the only Portia Williams. I am looking at people.com. Portia Williams, stunning wedding to Simon Giabata. I apologize, sir, for mispronouncing your name. Over Thanksgiving weekend, the real housewife of Atlanta. 41 years old in the Nigerian born businessman, 57 wed in a Nigerian traditional native law and custom ceremony at the Four Seasons Hotel, followed by a second American ceremony one day later at the local Methodist church with a reception at St. Regis Atlanta. Portia looked gorgeous. Here are some fun stats about her wedding. Happened over a long holiday weekend. They had two ceremonies. Sis had seven dresses. Celebrity guest, a 10-tier cake, and a partridge in a pear tree, Ashley. All right. (laughs) Um, We talked about her. She was a hot topic or a quick headline, I think, last year when she got with old dude. Because if you pay close attention to this story she had a quote-unquote friend who invited her over to her house and guess what she was introduced to her now husband at his former home with his former wife that was a bit of drama a lot of that has died down I almost wonder if that's intentional, Ashley. What, what also you- thanks in part to, I think, the shenanigans that went on with the other side of things and her Correct. getting talking about pregnant and, you know, yeah. so it's kind of like, well, I guess they cancel each other out, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> don't they? <laughs> Have you seen these pictures? Did you follow any of what was going on on social media? What I did enjoy about this was seeing all the other housewives dress up for the wedding so i'm talking you know i'm a potomac girl so giselle was there monique was there um big mouth candace was there (laughs) Uh, (laughs) is that her official nickname delora girl you know i don't play with her so (laughs) what you think um i followed a little bit i think one thing that i saw was she accidentally showed her red dress like on instagram live or something like that so that was a big to do for her somehow she had forgotten that it was like in the background but obviously seeing the photos seeing everything it was beautiful the seven dresses hey do your thing girl i'm mad at you and all of them were gorgeous all of them were gorgeous her bridesmaids dresses i'm looking at because i'm looking at people as well gorgeous i think the the pop uh the the color popped when all these beautiful brown skin tones yes um so just in general everything looked like it was it was nice and i'm you know happy for them i hope this works out for portia because she had a lot of drama with old dennis so i'm hoping for the best absolutely 
that red dress again she looked divine she had the red dress she had the blue dress she had a pink dress i my favorite look though was the over exaggerated beyonce hat from (laughs) (laughs) from formation the white one with the the beaded cat suit that was super cute yeah love 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 so also love the music like y'all just gonna have drew hill just pop up i was just about to say they had drew hill they also had a traditional benin dancers and singers perform during the nigerian ceremony so man she's a gorgeous bride Mm -hmm. i hope her husband is happy and going they're gonna be together (laughs) i'm thinking about and i'm gonna stay right beside him Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into our next quick headline. I am looking at Essence Magazine. Megan the Stallion makes history with Forbes cover. This isn't getting the type of buzz that I needed to give, but you know me, I'm a business person and I love Forbes. And when I saw the Meg the Stallion on the cover, with hair extensions, with the cat eye, with the nails for their well-known 30 under 30 edition, I was losing my sugar honey iced tea. (laughs) So looking at the magazine here, it talks about how Meg the Stallion has earned an estimated $13 million in 2022 due to a mix of ticket sales, record royalties, endorsements, and... What I love about it is she first appeared on the list in 2019, where she was estimated to make $2 million at the time. And this is just great press for Meg, Ashley, especially considering all the drama that has been going on from Drake and 21 Savage album that has apparently come and gone. Um, But Drake making slick you know, comments about Meg the Stallion getting shot. I'm just super excited about it. I'm going to first ask you, did you see uh, the cover? And did you have any first impressions about it? I know Forbes is it. Forbes is a very interesting magazine for the simple fact they want to be business, but they know people love entertainment. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, that they have a running billionaires list on their <laughs> on their website and I'm always looking for Oprah and Jay-Z. I'm just joking. <laughs> How proud are you of this hottie? I'm very excited. It is surprising though that she's the first black woman to grace the 30 under 30 for them in 2022. Um but I'm very excited for her. Um, as a fellow redhead, we're having our moment. So I don't <laughs> Okay, part of your world. Listen, I am very excited for Meg. I know that the trial and all that stuff is going to be coming up very soon. And yep. things may get a little crazier and a little messier and a little more hard for her soon. So I'm glad she's getting continued wins leading up to it to hopefully help as public perception may shift and people may have their opinions and all that stuff that she may have to deal with. So. And I forgot to mention that just recently, even when she was in New York, New York prepping for SNL, she was burglarized. They stole $300,000 worth of jewelry from her Los Angeles home. So Meg Thee Stallion has such a, a soft spot in my heart. I know, you know, she, unfortunately has lost her parents and Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what it's like navigating fame and Hollywood and trusting people and dealing with the incident as you mentioned that the trial will be coming up for I'm rooting for you sis Mm -hmm. if nobody else is we got you back we got you back you know black women will uplift you no matter what literally Let's go ahead and talk about something a little bit more frivolous. 
Speaking of hotties, Pete landed him another one, <laughs> Pete Davidson. Nice transition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at E! News. Pete Davidson and M- Emily Radikowski attend New York Knicks game together. This came out November 27th. There were rumors about them hanging out recently. And this is their very first public appearance. They look, she looks kind of smitten, Ashley. Have you seen the video and pictures of it? Is she smitten or is she just like, oh my God, who all is taking pictures and video right now? Because I'm sure we're on these internet somewhere. You know, it felt more shy to me than necessarily smitten. Because didn't she say something publicly when he was still with Kim Kardashian or somebody about she understood his sex appeal? Like she understood why people were so into him. I feel like Emily said something at that time. And I was like, hmm, okay. And then this is literally the next one that he moves on with. But let me say, I'm starting to get the feeling that Pete is like the male J-Lo. He cannot be alone. I think there are definitely code of dependency issues here. Uh (laughs) Like Nate, when when's the last time you've seen him single attached? Single. Because with J Lo, the breaks, I don't even I don't think she's ever taken a year off. The only time I think there may have been a little bit of a break was right before A Rod. I feel like there may have been a brief break because I remember kind of talking she about was old, messing with Casper on and yeah, off. But I feel like there was a a little bit of break after Casper and before A-Rod. Like I said, a little bit of a break. That just means that there wasn't a man that immediately called her and said, I hear your relationship is crumbling. Uh, Can I get my shot? Console <laughs> you in the process. I don't know my if question, anybody's... So, go ahead. How many times did he call her in this time? I, I'm curious. I don't know if anybody used to watch How I Met Your Mother, but there was a character on there that whenever she got single, a bunch of guys would come out of the woodwork to try to get with her to be the next one. And that's what I always imagined for J-Lo. I always imagine her Listen, phone blowing up as soon as her relationship is in the headlines. That's Pete because... He ain't hurting. That's all I can say. This man is not hurting. He is not hurting at all. He even has a whole entire write-up on Vogue.com in defense of dating Pete Davidson. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Why do we got to have a think piece about this? But this writer essentially says that his biggest appeal is that he's fun. And she, of course, highlights past relationships with Ariana Grande, Kate Beckinsale, Margaret uh, Quelly, Kaya Gerber, Phoebe uh, Denver, and of course, Kim Kardashian. What gets me is that even Dionne Warwick on Twitter said, I'm next. Yep. You know, what's interesting, though, is that to your point about him being fun, I don't know. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Have you listened to the last episode of Archetypes yet? No, not yet. Okay. So there was just one moment with Judd Apatow where he speaks about Pete Davidson starring in The King of Staten Island. And he talks about he has such a phenomenal emotional vulnerability that he provides. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing I think that some of these women may be attracted to is that he is emotionally available possibly in ways that some guys just aren't that's very true because kim talked about it on the show um well before they broke up that he's thoughtful and not domineering and tell her what to wear like her last relationship i just feel like it's cute now because he's still young and he's bagging all these literally A-list bombshells Mm -hmm. left and right. But I guess what I'm trying to say is I was curious to know who his post-Kim Kardashian love was going to be, and this one is not surprising. So, bravo, sir. Are you surprised that we see him with another love interest before you? we see Kim with another interest? No. You think the kids kind of keep her from immediately jumping into something else? 
and the implosion of her husband's life, I'm sure, mm. plays a major role. Mm. I mean, did you hear about hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, what is it, child support? That was a month. That was excessive when I first read it. I was like, did I read that right for like their financial? relationship like i was surprised that seemed excessive given the wealth that they each have but um did you hear about phoebe supposedly dating andrew garfield real quick yes yes and yes and i'm not mad because andrew is in his sexy era now before it was like boyish charm then it was i'm a real actor I don't just dress up in costume anymore. I can do drama. And now he's coming for that fashion, you know, that fashion, sexy era. And I am here for it. Remember, he was on, on our list. GQ? I don't, I don't remember GQ. Remember, he's on our list for the last like award show yes. he stepped out to. That oh white my suit. goodness. He said, I'm coming off this six month sabbatical glowing. Remember, he said he went <laughs> six months without sex. He said, I'm coming out glowing, baby ready ready <laughs> he's peacocking right now <laughs> but nah listen pete do your thing sir do your thing i appreciate that at least you know you keep it legal you're not wilmer valderamming yes, out he here not waiting for them to turn 18 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wilmer was notorious for it Courtney's ex started playing around with that in a, in my personal opinion. Scott? Yep. I always thought Scott was dating young to avoid commitment, but it doesn't excuse some of them. Like, <laughs> girl, when he started messing with uh, the one housewife's daughter, I was like, yep. After messing with Richie first? Mm -hmm. Cuz she yep. was 19? Yep. Yeah, we'll see. But do your thing, Pete. That's all I got. I just want, I, 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 here I am. I kind of want Pete to find his happily ever after. I really do feel like he thinks he's going to be with these women. And some of these women, in my opinion, use him. Possibly. I mean, that you've put his genitals out here. <laughs> Ariana made internet. a whole entire song about it. Yes. Yeah, so possibly. I'm not talking about thank you next either. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, with this one, it definitely feels like a rebound because she just split from... Yeah, I don't think this is it, but you're right. But I know he won, he's talked about one kids, so I yep. think he probably is more serious when he's entering into a lot of these unions. But is he going to pass up Emily if she comes knocking <laughs> on his door? No. Negative. Negative. No. So, do your thing. All right, Ashley, let's go ahead and talk about our hot topics. We have two this week. The first, Will Smith is on his press tour for Apple TV's Emancipation. He has done interviews with TV outlets, and he's done his very first sit down with Trevor Noah which was an excellent interview, by the way. I highly recommend. I thought it was brilliant because I feel like Trevor Noah is one, respectable, but he's also a safe space in terms of, um, I think it was smart that he did something like Trevor Noah than going to Oprah or uh, Diane Sawyer, Sawyer's you know what I mean? Like having a sit down in that way. He'd already just think... had his sit down with Oprah anyway. So well, for I didn't book, want to relive it. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't want to relive that again anyway. Because she's just going to make him cry. And then we all going to And I don't, think he's, I don't think he's ready for that, actually. I think he did what he had to do. And so let's talk about it. So again, looking at people.com, Will Smith's Trevor Noah interview gets split reactions from Hollywood better apologize or needs more humility it says one industry insider tells people i don't think he should be judged on this one incident for the rest of his life <sighs> we have talked about the infamous slap that happened earlier this year as i mentioned 
He's been doing his rollout because this film that's coming out is a very, it's op, it's absolutely Oscar bait, Ashley. And I want to ask you what has stuck out uh, for you during this press tour about his level of remorse or regret or it's not necessarily an apology because I think he's already done that. Um, but I I need to know your thoughts. Yeah, I can't say anything has surprised me at this point because everything he said is kind of what I was expecting. I knew he was going to have to address this again once he got out in the streets and once he got out and started trying to do more promotion. You know, we saw, we've talked about some of the um, screenings he did early on with some, you know, big celebrities and some big power players behind the scenes and all of that. And so, you know, I knew the interviews were inevitable, but, you know, it's all kind of what I've been anticipating. You know, he said he was going through something and you just never know what people are going through. And I hear you. Hopefully he has been able to move past whatever that may have been. But I think at this point, there's been nothing else that I've needed. And I've said that many times from Will Smith to continue on with his career. I'm just waiting to see again when Chris Rock is finally ready to speak and what that's going to look like. And if that's going to add fuel to the fire or kind of deaden the situation because Chris Rock is going to have a live Netflix special. Yeah. And so when is that dropping? And is that going to affect public perception? Because I already feel like, for the most part, at least publicly, there has been a shift away from it. There's been so many things that have happened since that people yes. are kind of, I don't want to say that there's people who still would not hesitate to see this, but I don't think it's the same type of outrage that we saw originally. So nothing has surprised me as of now. Mm. So some of the things that I've appreciated during um, watching several of his interviews as well as the one that he had with trevor noah he's absolutely taking ownership of his actions he's even talked talked about how it's impacted his own family he had his nephew on his lap and showing him the oscar and his nephew asked him why did you slap that man and he himself was crushed and from his book tour we know that He's hard on himself. Mm -hmm. He's hard on himself. But I really do appreciate that he's also taking the time to take the spotlight off of himself and highlighting his team. So he's been very adamant about, he's like, I know this is awards season. I feel like this is some of the best work that my team has done. And he wants to make sure that they get the credit that they deserve. And I really appreciate that. Now, will he be able to convince Hollywood? I don't know. But uh, one of the things that Trevor Noah said that was that the movie was undeniable. And I want to talk about the movie because at the end of the day, he is promoting this movie. So in Emancipation, Smith stars as Peter, a man who escaped from slavery and forces him to rely on his wits, unwavering faith, and deep love for his family as he runs from slave hunters and through Louisiana on his journey towards freedom. It is inspired by the 1863 photos of Whipped Peter, which is the iconic picture of a Black man's back that has been whipped. It was one of the first images that really highlighted the atrocities of slavery. Mm -hmm. um, it's also important to know that Will Smith and people associated with this film are not calling this another slave movie. They are saying it's a movie about freedom. And I appreciate them saying that. And the movie is coming out on Friday. And it'll be streaming uh, Apple TV December 9th. So I look forward to seeing it. Do you? It looks like a good dramatic movie. And I watch dramatic movies in the winter. <laughs> winter is coming. <laughs> Let's keep it real. You remember that one year? I don't remember what year it was, but I remember it was like such a shortage of like really decent dramas in the winter. And I was so heartbroken. I'm like... I need to be swept away 
buy a period piece of some sort. I need drama, tears, and the ability to overcome. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. I don't because I'm not on that page with you. Tis the season for me of, of joy and cheer and merriment and happiness. Not that I'm generally like, you know, I generally like that in general. I generally like that in general. Wow. I like that usually in general. But the reason why I asked do you is because I'm not excited to see this. Will I see it because I'm going to support? Sure, I'm gonna give it a stream. But do I think there are going to be periods that I fast forward through? Yes, because guys, I don't like this era. I don't like watching it. It's very traumatic. I abhor it. Yeah. I do abhor very it. Very traumatic. So I'm not, I yeah. really would not be excited to see this in theaters because then I have no choice but to sit there and be yeah. stuck in it. And so am I excited? No. Maybe that's not the word I really intended to say. What I'm trying to say is I'm absolutely going to watch it. I'm absolutely going to have opinions about it. And I do want to, I do want to know because I'm a big history buff. So I, I want to know this story ab- about Peter's story. That is what I'm trying to say. Um, really quick to speak to how much I hate this time when it comes to movies and stuff. Huge friend, fan of Outlander and spoiler alert, but they're like six seasons in first couple of seasons was great. We were, you know, the green lens of, are they in Scotland? Somewhere. I can't remember. Somewhere one of them countries. Then they went to France. Then they were at the Caribbean, random, I know. But then they made their way to North America uh, during, right before 1776. I'm, I just saw Hamilton. I forgot to mention that. I saw freaking Hamilton on stage during Thanksgiving, by the way. Shout out to my girlfriend, Aaliyah. Wait for it. Satisfied. Nonstop my life my life it was amazing but as soon as they made it to america i was like "Mm, i'm good y'all talking about black people and enslaved black people and y'all treating native american people wrong why why can't we just stay for the beautiful luscious um landscape of scotland like why do we have to come over here (laughs) yeah it's not that laura and i are saying that these stories do not need to be told it's just painful as all of our black listeners i'm sure can at least relate to it's painful to to have to sit through so absolutely all right our final hot topic today ashley i am looking at madame noir this is Angela Yee's last week on The Breakfast Club. Ashley, it's an end to an era. Over a decade at Power 105.1, The Breakfast Club. Angela Yee. <laughs> Who was that rubber that kept messing up her name? I don't know. That was a famous meme. If y'all know, you know what I'm talking about announced in august that she'll be making her exit this year and this is her final week are you gonna miss her um so no but i say that not because i'm not rooting for angela but because i can't remember the last time i've actually watched or listened to the breakfast club at this point so i can't say miss is the right word if this were impacting probably one of my favorite pods these days and I would feel it a little bit more but I'm sure just in general the chemistry of the show is going to change we talked about this I think when it was first announced and curious who they're going to bring on if they're going to bring on someone to replace her I saw the headline which was cute that Charlemagne and Envy wore wigs I think like (laughs) they did yes so you know keeping it light keeping it funny and keeping the chemistry for the time they still have together. But I see in a headline from The Root that she's really excited. So I'm excited for her. Yeah, she's going to have her own show. 13 years is a long time. That's a journey. So excited for her. So I was a huge Breakfast Club fan, um, partly because I commuted for many years, long hours, and they kept me company in the freaking morning it was a joy they were messy af when it came to the trio 
even though he's messy AF, Charlemagne was probably the one that I leaned to the most. Mm-hmm. I think the issue that I had with Angela Yee in particular was I feel like, how can I say this politely without sounding rude? I don't feel like she gives all of herself. I feel like she seems guarded in a way that I don't know if I can trust her. <laughs> like, with her is always my friend, my friend, my friend. But I'm like, what about you? What about you, sis? What was your favorite interview or moment with her on the show? Mm, I don't know if I necessarily have a particular favorite moment. There were just so many memorable things that have happened over the breakfast club over the years. Soldier Boy's appearance sticks in my mind so much. Absolutely. With the Draco, the big Draco and all this. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just been, you know. Put some I- respect Oh my name. I would love for Angela after all this is over to give us kind of like a top tier thoughts of the craziest moments that she's had and things that we never got a chance like to behind experience. The scenes. Yeah, like that would be yeah. fun because there's just been too many memorable interviews um that have taken place over these years. And I mean Charlemagne almost got beat up. Like there's just been so many things. She's that have beefed happened. out with him. Um she's had beef with guests. I mean, they're all messy. Because the August Alcina, as we talked about, is the thing she lives in infamy for right now. But that wasn't a Breakfast Club interview. It wasn't. So it wasn't. There's no like entanglement of it all. There's no key memorable moment for me from the Breakfast Club, but the Breakfast Club itself has a ton of memorable moments. So being that she was there to your point available observing everything even if she was not necessarily always the strongest personality on the show maybe she'll have some great gems thereafter that she'll be more willing to share so that'd be fun yeah, possibly possibly i really do enjoy their interviews every once in a while i'll still go on youtube and just look at you know particular guests and just like oh i want to see what they have to say because even if she it was something about that chemistry that people really poured their their souls out for all of us to consume and i mean they're going down for sure in the culture for oh, absolutely. sure absolutely and they're already in the radio hall and fame so absolutely here we go so my final question to you ashley is who do you think they should replace her with should they go for another female i think it'd be entirely too much testosterone to have three men on that particular panel or do you think dj envy and Charlemagne can do it you know do it all on their own i'm sure they could i think it's an exciting time to look at possibilities with that panel and kind of the way that the show goes and is in terms of how they want it to kind of move forward in the future I don't think they should bring on another guy. I think if they do bring on a third guest, it should be another woman. I can't say that I necessarily just have anybody in my mind because I don't follow some of the up and coming DJs and personalities like I probably used to. Yeah. But I think anybody who fills her seat, as long as they have some level of a presence and appreciation for the culture they'll be able to get integrated in in fairly well because those Charlamagne and and DJ Envy are too seasoned to kind of get to have that get messed up by somebody else. You know what I mean? Regardless, they'll be able to still run the show. So that's a good point. That's a great point. Well, we will see. All right, Ashley. That's all I got for today, but I am super excited for our recap next week. What are we recapping? Guys, this show has been talked about quite a bit within my friend circle, even over the holidays. So we are recapping Hulu and Honest Collective's first original series together, Reasonable Doubt. Nine hour longish episodes, Jack Stewart out here doing her thing, juggling multiple beautiful men, balancing her career, balancing her kids. Adding her name to a long list Mm -hmm. of beautiful, infamous Black TV lawyers. Directed, first pilot episode, and executive produced by none other than the Carrie Washington. 
as well as Larry Wilmore. I guess. Yes. yes. So it's just going to be an exciting project to talk about. We do it for the culture for this one. So stay tuned, guys. If you haven't watched the series, be sure to check it out and we'll see you next time. Bye.